Hey guys, you're watching Tech Editor. I'm Basil, and this is the Red Magic 9 Pro, a gaming phone that launched at the end of 2023. And after a few months, it's had some software updates. It's still the lowest cost Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 device at £579 if you're here in the UK, $649 in the US. And this thing on paper is an absolute monster. 6,500 milliamp battery and it looks so good. But where's the catch? This thing has so much going for it. On the front, you've got that all screen display. No punch holes, no notches, just visual immersion. At the top is a 3.5 mil headphone jack. On the right side is a fan inbuilt. No clip on fan like the Asus ROG phone. So it keeps its cool without any accessories. There are left and right triggers with RGB lighting as well. And around the back, no camera bumps, just a flat sheet of glass. And it isn't crazy thick at 8.9 millimeters, despite that giant battery. Now, ROG phones, Red Magic phones, all gaming phones have some drawbacks, mainly the camera. And Red Magic phones in the past have also had some pretty janky translation within the UI. So are these issues coming back to haunt the Red Magic 9 Pro, hold it back from excellence, or is this the gaming phone to be? From the front, this phone's basically an S24 Ultra with a really rectangular look, and that extends to the frame. It's flat sides, flat top, flat bottom, flat back, very, very boxy. And this thing isn't light either. At 229 grams, it's a few grams heavier than an iPhone 15 Pro Max. But what it does by being so boxy is feel really comfortable to game on with those really flat sides making for an almost controller-like feel. So it's a glass and metal sandwich, glass at the front, glass at the back, Gorilla glass as well. And while the metal frame is very, very rectangular, it's got a slight curve at the corners, so it isn't too uncomfortable when you're holding it like a phone. The RGB lights extend from the fan to the nine around the back for Red Magic 9 series and those triggers as well. And it's worth noting, if you like the gaming phone styling, you'll really like wearing Red Magic's going for this. I personally really like the 8 Pro and 8 S Pro. They're a bit more pared back. This is a little bit more garish with those glyphs, but irrespective, I really do appreciate what Red Magic's doing here, streamlining things. And also I can't stress enough, a 6,500 milliamp battery in a phone that's 8.9 millimeters thick is very, very cool. On the downside, naturally with an exposed fan, there is no waterproofing. In the box with a Red Magic, Magic 9 Pro, you get a charging brick, a cable, and you also get a case. Now the case doesn't protect the phone from all sides. It's mainly just the top, bottom, and corners. But what it does do is it protects the whole back of the phone, including the camera. Now with a flat back, the camera is very exposed to being scratched. And also this thing glides on a smooth surface. The case prevents that as well. So you're probably a little bit less likely to end up with a shattered phone. I haven't really got a bad word to say about the Red Magic 9 Pro's screen. The selfie camera is invisible unless you're looking for it. So that's much, much better than what we've seen from Samsung and Z Fold series devices. The screen's also brighter than last generation devices, so it's easy to see indoors and out. It gets nice and low with minimum brightness too, so comfortable to read at night. And the size, the shape, it's perfect for watching on. With that really rectangular shape, no curved corners, you're not cropping out any content. And it's a really comfortable aspect ratio for watching and gaming on as well. With a customizable refresh rate of either 60, 90 or 120 hertz, or just auto refresh rate, it's nice that you have control over that. And you also have a lot of customization options when it comes to how the picture looks. Either in the game, you can customize it game by game. So make one game really nice and vibrant and another game a little bit more paired back and within the display settings. So your day-to-day -day interface looks a little bit subdued. It's an OLED display as well, HDR technology. So blacks are endless, inky, beautifully deep as are darker colors and highlights look really, really vibrant. Now, if you're a Netflix fan, 
and the Red Magic 9 Pro might not be perfect for you despite that incredible screen, you need Netflix certification for each phone to access high definition and high dynamic range content. And this phone doesn't have that certification. However, it does for Disney Plus. So unlike an S24, which will be certified for every single service, guaranteed. A smaller company like Red Magic will probably be a little bit more hit and miss. So if you're really wedded to a service, check out whether it's compatible before you pick one up. The speakers on this phone really bring to life whatever you're watching. They're loud, immersive, expansive, not quite as deep as an iPhone 15 Pro Max, for example, but about on par with a ROG Phone 8 Pro. I tested the Red Magic 9 Pro with a Backbone 1 controller and with the case off, it fits like a glove, but if you do put the case on, it won't quite fit. So you'll need to take it off every single time you use the controller. If you want a controller that works with the case, the Nacon MGX Pro does. So there are some options. Also, as far as headphone goes, you're going to get the least lag and latency if you plug in wired headphones. But I did try these out with Bose headphones that support Aptex audio and it played back sound with minimal lag. I didn't get any delay between watching or gaming and what I could hear. Running Android 14 with Red Magic OS 9, Red Magic skin over the top. This is a very simple, clean, uncomplicated take on Google's mobile operating system. No excessive flourishes. You haven't got resizable folders, for example. A swipe down from the left won't pull a different menu to a swipe down on the right like on an iPhone or the Honor Magic 6 Pro, for example. If you like uncomplicated stuff, there's a very good chance you'll really like this for the most part. While day-to-day -day performance was smoother than on any other past Red Magic phone, no app force closes or anything like that, there were still a few translation issues in the settings. Also, the Mora application gives you control over Red Magic's scantily clad mascot, and that's honestly just a little bit creepy. And probably the thing that's going to annoy most people, Red Magic software update policy extends to three years of security updates. And what that means is while you have incredibly future-proofed hardware with all this power under the hood, the software isn't as future-proofed. So that might impact the life cycle of the phone in the long run. Another aspect of the Red Magic 9 Pro, and in fact, all gaming phones that tends to be underwhelming is camera. The Red Magic 9 Pro's been improved a little bit, specifically with our ultra wide camera, but reeling off with the main camera specs, you've got a 50 megapixel Samsung GN5 sensor. It's got a one over 1.57 inch sensor size and an f1.9 aperture. So all the specs marry to make for a competent but definitely not class leading experience on paper. The ultra wide camera has been improved over last year's 8 megapixel ultra wide. Now it's a 50 megapixel Samsung sensor and Red Magic's brought back the 2 megapixel macro camera. I don't really know why but I'm just going to ignore that that's there. The main sensor, the ultra wide, look promising for a start. You've also got that 16 megapixel selfie camera. It's under display. And while the technology, the hardware of the camera module is the same as we've seen in the past, Red Magic has said that it's improved the layers of display, the screen, so it should hopefully perform better. I was more impressed than I thought I would be by the 9 Pro's camera. Specifically, Red Magic's tuned the photo processing to just look a bit more natural than past Red Magic phones, but also the Asus ROG Phone 8 Pro, which on paper should have a much better camera. But the Red Magic 9 Pro's processing doesn't ramp up contrast and over sharpening quite so much. And so, in good light, for me personally, delivers a better shot, which is kind of confusing. But when the lights drop, things start to crumble, especially when photographing moving subjects. If your subject still though, especially things like architecture, the night mode can create a really nice sense of drama. So ultimately I was quite impressed by the main and ultra wide camera, even if they aren't class leading at the price, they're really respectable for a gaming phone. I was also impressed with video recording. At up to 8K you don't get image stabilization, so you want to prop this up on a surface in good light, you'll be able to get some really great looking shots. But if you do want to handhold stuff, 4K, the lower the resolution, the better really. At night, 
video, like with photos, starts to crumble a little bit, but that's really the same with most phones, especially gaming phones. Now, moving on to the front camera, 16 megapixel under display camera has this really heavy beauty mode on by default, and it makes you look atrocious. Some people might think it's good, but I definitely didn't. But the catch is turn off that beauty mode and you get this kind of dreamy filter effect, which is obviously a byproduct of having that under display selfie camera. So by having that immersive screen, there is a very clear trade-off, selfies. So I'd really recommend rather than use a selfie camera, lean on the fact you've got this almost mirror finish glass back on the phone and use the main camera for selfies. I did that quite a bit and ended up getting much, much better results. I really couldn't be more impressed that Red Magic's fit a 6,500 milliamp battery in here. I said earlier, 8.9 millimeters thin, this is wizardry. Now it will get you a full day if you're gaming comfortably, but if you're just using this phone like a phone, you can easily get two days out of it. What's also cool is fast charging, 80 watts, charger in the box, so you power up fully in around 40 odd minutes. Unfortunately, there's no wireless charging, but with all the things that this has going for it, I'm not complaining. Saving the best for last, I'm talking about gaming, and it might surprise you to know the Red Magic 9 Pro is in fact my favorite all-purpose gaming phone money can buy. That's pretty nuts, especially considering for my best Genshin phone video, I ranked the 8 Pro, the Asus ROG Phone 8 Pro that is, above it because of the Genshin specific optimizations. But actually, the Red Magic 9 Pro does a lot of things better. For starters, the screen. No punch hole. I don't care about a sky high refresh rate when I'm gaming with games that cap out at 60 or 120 hertz. What also really, really is a game changer for me is having an inbuilt fan versus a clip on fan. It just means you've always got one on you wherever you are. Also the Asus ROG phone, the reduced bezels, it suffered from accidental presses when I was gaming for it, especially when I was lying down, whereas I didn't get any of that while gaming on the Red Magic 9 Pro. It's also worth noting that the left and right shoulder triggers on the Red Magic 9 Pro are more accurately responsive than those of the ROG Phone 8 Pro. What do I mean? I'd get ghost presses every time I kind of flexed the ROG Phone 8 Pro. This might have been a faulty unit that I had, but the Red Magic 9 Pro I've been testing has been working perfectly. When you're gaming, you can swipe in a raft of tools, which gives you so much granular control over your experience from GPU anti-aliasing settings right through to different performance modes, from eco to dull things right back, balanced makes a few decisions for you, through to rise, which is what you'd think would be the performance mode, but no, fire up Diablo, you'll get a warning saying this phone is gonna get hot and it unleashes the maximum performance from that Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Specifically, it unlocks 3.3 gigahertz from the CPU and 903 megahertz from the GPU, which keeps frame rates smoother than anything on the block, including the ROG Phone 8 Pro. Again, that inbuilt fan really, really coming through. Sure, a 20 minute 3D mark solar based stress test with Diablo mode fired up is going to heat this phone up. It got to 50 degrees after I did that, but that is not representative of what it's like to actually game on this thing. I played for hours in Diablo mode as well and it didn't get uncomfortable, but when I was in a hot environment and it did start to warm up, I just dialed back to eco mode or balanced or rise and the temperature went right down. So while there's been some talk of this thing overheating, I've only been able to get that in very, very manufactured environments. When I've been actually gaming on this at max graphic settings across different games, it's been an absolute dream. The final point to note is storage. You've got 256 or 512 gigabytes. Get whichever version you need for the games that you've got. It's really, really respectable. I don't need to gush about the Red Magic 9 Pro anymore when it comes to gaming. Hopefully I've explained why it's my number one choice and why at 579 pounds here in the UK, it's pretty darn great. There are a couple of points I haven't mentioned 
Legion. One bad, there's no eSIM support here. So if you travel a lot and rely on eSIMs, then that's a bit of a bummer. But on the plus, there's display out from the USB-C at the base. So if you jump into developer settings, activate the desktop type beta mode in Android 14, you can get some relatively hacky type secondary screen usage out, hook up a keyboard and mouse, and you can get pretty comfortable document editing out of it. And so in summary, the Red Magic 9 Pro may not be the best phone around. The UI is a little bit unrefined and low key dodgy at times. The camera isn't best in class and there's no waterproofing or wireless charging, but it does do exactly what it sets out to do. It delivers gaming excellence. And what it also does is it looks good in the process, lasts for ages by packing in the highest capacity battery of any mainstream phone. I really, really rate what Red Magic's doing. And if you've been following the Red Magic Asus wars over the last few years, Red Magics have always competed with ROG phones and Asus phones have generally edged ahead. This year looks like the first where Red Magic has edged ahead of the ROG Phone 8 Pro with its redesign. The iterative Red Magic 9 Pro is actually a safer bet in many respects. And this extends to Nubia, Red Magic's once parent company when compared to the Asus Zenfone 11. So it's a really exciting time for competitive underdog smartphone makers if you're a geek like me. All things said and done though, Red Magic 9 Pro, excellent phone, even if it isn't perfect. Now I haven't been paid for any of the reviews on the channel, but I am going to link through some affiliate links in the description below. So if you're thinking about picking one up, if you do it through those links, I may well earn some commission. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, click that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and comment to let me know what you think of this phone or if there are any other phones I should be taking a look at. Thanks for watching.